So uh, this is a topic that really hasn't been tested. As you see in the upper corner, it's zero out of zero. Uh, but we just want to present some information regarding this because it might become a topic. We see some more papers on this. And this is scapulothoracic crepitus, or otherwise known as a snapping scapula syndrome. And basically, the most common site where this occurs is at the upper superior medial corner of the scapula. Um, the pathophysiology, as you can imagine, is that there's a, a little bit of an edge. And where this actually rubs is very close to the third rib. And so the third rib in the corner of the scapula will have some contact. And this can be uh, just can happen in some patients. Um, as you see here, a few different causes, overuse, inflammation, <clears throat> A bursitis can develop there. Someone has a strain to their shoulder and develops a snapping sensation in their shoulder. Um, there are other things such as an osteochondroma, which is a easy thing to test because you can see that on a CT scan and it's something to keep in mind. There's this other rare trivial question, the uh, lastofibroma dorsi, uh, but that's not typically the things that uh, we think about. Of course, it can always be something more severe like a, a scapular chondrosarcoma. Um, there's a, a lot of different structures that attach to the scapula as well as come from the scapula, and so it's kind of important to go through that. But again, for this condition, the most common site is that superior medial corner, and the individuals will do like a shrugging sensation, and you'll hear and feel that noise where that is rubbing on uh, the area of the third rib. Um, the, the anatomy in this site, as you see here, uh, is uh, the, the levator scapula actually attaches to that corner, and just a little bit more lateral to that will be the scapular notch with the transverse scapular ligament and the suprascapular artery and nerve. And those are kind of away from the area where we see the crepitation. And this just goes over the blood supply. And so the other area that can be involved in one of the things we have to worry about is neurologic symptoms. If there's a neurologic imbalance because there's a problem with the dorsal scapular nerve, which is going to the rhomboids, uh, then that can cause uh, the scapula to not move correctly on the chest wall, and then that results in a problem where uh, they actually get some noise in that area. And usually it's more of a nuisance, and a lot of times when you tell your patients it's fine, you're going to be okay, that's all they need to hear, but some of them can be very symptomatic. Um, the other parts of the anatomy around the scapula, you can see here it's been reported, uh, the scapulothoracic bursa underneath uh, the upper medial corner. Uh, the other area that we see, particularly in our overhead throwing athletes like baseball players, is at the the inferior border of the scapula, again, rare, but it, it can happen. And then they've listed in this diagram a couple of other areas which are extremely rare and uh, generally uh, not well recognized. Uh, the history is, uh, is often uh, uh, something happened and they weren't really sure and then it starts to get more uncomfortable and they hear this noise and they're very worried about that. They complain about popping or a crepitation in their shoulder. And so, uh, and so that's something that bothers. I'm just going to move that off of there for now. So the physical examination, we're basically trying to rule out other conditions. And you ask the patient to actually demonstrate this. And you look for signs of whether that's really pain for them. You also want to really look carefully at the scapula, make sure there's not an associated neurologic condition, uh, such as winging of the scapula, most common being from an injury to the long thoracic nerve. And the serratus anterior is not functioning well, so the medial border is winging on them. So you want to make sure that you test all of these and isolate out what's the trapezius doing, what's the serratus doing, and then you look from the top down, the levator scapula, and then your rhomboids, and at the very bottom corner, the latissimus uh, is another structure you can look at carefully. Uh, we do get plain radiographs. They often don't help us out very much, and so if you're very worried about it, a CT scan is probably the most useful. Uh, to look at that upper superior corner. If you think there's a soft tissue mass, then of course an MRI is going to give you a little bit more information. Most of these are treated conservatively uh, that come to the office, anti-inflammatory medications, physical therapy, and actually corticosteroid injection in that area can be really valuable for two reasons. One, it might be very therapeutic, and two, it helps give a good diagnosis. If it gets rid of their pain, uh, then you know that that's what they're concerned about. And with the physical therapy, we work on the scapular exercise. The most common thing or important thing to do is to, is to work on the 
lower trapezius and uh, the lower rhomboids because you want to pull that scapula down and out of the way. And a lot of these people have this condition called a six scapula where they're, they're, they're rolled over, their shoulders are rolled forward, they have a tight pec minor, and so you want to make sure and do those exercises in their lower back of their shoulder to really help them out. Uh, corticosteroid injections, as I mentioned, can be very valuable. They're very safe. You obviously have to follow the line of the thorax so you don't put that in someone's lung. That would not be a good idea, of course. And then uh, uh, there is some treatment for this. And the classic treatment is to go in and remove the triangle of that superior medial corner. Um, then others have talked about just going in and removing the bursa if there's no bony deformity and the patients remain symptomatic. Uh, despite appropriate conservative management. And more recently, it really was developed almost a decade ago, but more recently we see more surgeons applying this technique. You can arthroscopically approach this, and typically uh, you use two portals. Uh, you start below the level of the spine of the scapula, and then you can work underneath that corner, and you can actually remove the bursa. You can see this area and remove that triangle of bone at that superior medial corner. And uh, I think it works as well in, in a good a talented arthroscopist hands as, as the open surgery, and you don't have as much of the problem with the, the pain after surgery. So um, I think it's uh, definitely better if the patients have responded to an injection. And again, it can be done uh, either open or arthroscopic. Uh, when you do this, either way, most of the time the patients are prone, uh, and for the arthroscopic, you put the arm behind their back so it chicken wings their scapula off their shoulder, and this is the picture that you see here. And that allows you that approach in the lower picture uh, shows you the level where the uh, the view is. You actually view from the lower part and look up, and then your working portal is right at the level of the scapula, and you can take out that triangle. After surgery, uh, the patients are put in a sling. Um, most uh, people do a very conservative management. There's no reason to hurry or rush these people through, and they just do some gentle uh, activities um, beginning about four weeks active motion about six weeks usually, and then strengthening between eight and 12 weeks depending on the patient's symptoms. And um, again, I think that's uh, worked out pretty well. Uh, th this is the uh, resectomy with the uh, arm and internal rotation, and then the portals uh, that were talked about that we showed you already. And uh, what you actually do is you take your radio frequency device and, and clean off the inferior border of that bone, and you can see the triangle, and then you take a burr, just like you would with an acromioplasty or just a clavicle, and you start towards the medial edge, and you just systematically move yourself more laterally following that diagonal, and you'll be able to remove that within just a few minutes in most cases. You have to be careful. There are structures rather if you go too far lateral, you can get to the suprascapular nerve and the vein and artery, so that's a big problem, of course. And you have to stay away from going medial, about one to one and a half centimeters, uh, one to one and a half centimeters medial, you can run into uh, the dorsal scapular nerve uh, and the spinal accessory nerve. So you've got to be careful going medial. So you find that medial border, you clean that off, and then everything progresses laterally to make sure you're safe. And of course, pneumothorax could be uh, something that you'd really have to be lost to, to pull that one off. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.